Good morning. Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy White Stone Ceremony Day. You guys look dark out there. There's some lights we can turn on. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I'm like, all of a sudden, it's like something burned out. And it wasn't me. Oh well, yeah, maybe after my class this afternoon, I'll be ready to. Well, Happy New Year, and are you ready for 2019? Yes. Yeah. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. 19. Did, I, did I not say 19? 17. Did I say 18? I heard my own, my own voice say 19. That's so bizarre. <laughs> <laughs> I am not ready for 2019. <laughs> did, you, did you catch that? that little slip there? <sighs> and actually, which brings me to what I was going to say later, but I'll just bring it up now. You know, every year, because of the White Stone Ceremony, I kind of look for themes. You know, I kind of look for themes for myself, of course, because I'm going to be receiving my word also, but, but for our congregation. And, you know, I've got clients that I work with and in my practice and, you know, all of that. So I, I just kind of watch for kind of this overall thing that keeps coming to the surface. And one thing that has come up at every level is we do too much. We have way too much going on. And I know that's true for myself. And I came into this new year not feeling that, <coughs> that fresh, oh my gosh, it's the new year, bring it on, let's go. I walked into this new year going, I have got so many things to do. I'm in the process of changing my practice a little bit, and so there's tons of paperwork and background stuff to do, and, and I was on vacation, so I was walking back into that, and, and oh my gosh. And so when I got back from my vacation, throughout that whole week I was talking to, to people in my work, to friends, to family, and, and they were all kind of concurring too, like, yeah, I don't feel that new freshness of the new year, and there's just so much going on. It's like, okay, so this is, this is confirming my own message, which is, Lynn, you're doing too much. So one of the... Um, concepts that I've embraced for this year that I would like to share with you is a mindfulness concept. There's one mindfulness concept called FOMO. Does have anyone heard of FOMO? FOMO is F-O-M-O, which stands for fear of missing out. And the concept in mindfulness is, you know, one thing that when we are sitting in meditation, one thing that comes up for us frequently is well, I don't, first of all, I don't have enough time to sit down and meditate. But then when we're sitting with our thoughts, what comes up is, oh, I've got to do this, I've got to do this, I've got to do this, I've got to do this. And part of what keeps us going um, too much in the world is a fear that we're going to miss out on something unless we do that. And that's the psychology that all of our advertising is based on, right? They want us to feel like we're going to miss out on something if we don't buy their product. So there's a mindfulness writer who came up with a, a reframe of that called JOMO, the joy of missing out. <laughs> <laughs> so my white stone word for the first service was JOMO, joy of missing out. So that I can consciously reprioritize my time and where my focus, attention, and energy is going so that I can be more present for myself first, for my spiritual growth, for my son, for my daughter, for my people, for my friends, for, for you, for whoever I need to be present for in the moment, <clears throat> that I can say, so, yeah, I'm going to miss out on that extra episode of the Marvel comic series show on Netflix that Jason and I are watching together. We can maybe watch one less and have some time together. I can get some things done. Those kind of things. So, so as a theme for that, kind of carrying that into, I'm totally doing my talk backwards, by the way, so I'm having to rearrange Rearrange some things. So when I first 
um, presented the White Stone Ceremony. It was in the year 2000. My family and I had just moved from Albuquerque to Overland Park. On, let's see, when did we leave? We left the 26th of December and drove. And so this first Sunday was like we had been there less than a week. And I knew I was going to do it. Greg had asked me if I wanted to do that um, before we had moved. I'm like, what is the White Stone Ceremony? See, I grew up in Unity. Greg grew up in Unity. And Unity does not have a lot of regular rituals or ceremonies. You know, Unity was started as a, as a study group for spiritual principles, so there really, it wasn't a, an organized religious anything. It was just learning about the spiritual teachings. So as Unity grew and developed into churches, it was about the spiritual teachings. It wasn't about ritual. And so as, as Unity has grown and kind of embraced lots of people from other more traditional denominations that do have rituals and ceremonies, people in Unity felt like they were missing that. So 20 plus years ago, a couple of Unity ministers created some ceremonies and the White Stone Ceremony was part of it. Now Unity, we don't take anything literally, right? So what they did was they grabbed a couple of concepts. One is from the Book of Revelations and one is just from the history of the time around White Stone and, and what that was then and what it can be for us now and created this process of symbolizing something that is guiding our year, a concept, a, a revelation, a new expression of ourselves that will be part of our year ahead. So let me give you a little bit of the history of it. So the biblical part comes from the book of Revelations. And if, has anybody ever sat down and enjoyed the book of Revelations? <laughs> yeah. It's actually, it's actually kind of beautiful, you know, if, if you can hold it lightly. <laughs> so it's, you know, there's some historical stuff to the book of Revelations, which I'm not going to go into because it is not my forte. But, um, but the symbolism of it is a lot of trial and tribulation leading to kind of like the phoenix rising from the ashes, so to speak. So leading to, you know, you may go through a lot of, what can I say on a Sunday morning, stuff, but you will come to the other side of it and you'll, you will have moved through it and you have new, and a new expression of yourself. Okay, so the, the Bible verse in the, in the book of Revelation is, and I will give a white stone and on the white stone is written a new name that no one knows except the one who receives it. So after all this overcoming, you have a new consciousness. And you know that. Anytime you've overcome something in your life, you know you are not the same person as you were, that you were before you had to go through all of that. You know that. That's how we grow in consciousness. We don't all of a sudden become enlightened. We grow step by step, experience by experience. So in this, in the meaning of this, it's, you know, after you overcome this, you have this new light about you. You have this new consciousness. You are a new person. Your name may be the same. Your address may be the same. Your email address, may, your Facebook page may be the same. But inside, you are a new. You are a new. So the white stone is a symbol of that newness. Of, here's your new consciousness that is only you. You may be the only one who notices it, but it is going to change you, and your world will change as you do. The history of the white stone, and probably why it was used as that symbol in the book of Revelation, was that a prisoner being released from prison received a white stone. When they paid their dues, done their time, they received a white stone, which meant, my slate is clear. There's everything before me, any of my actions, any of my previous stuff is gone. I'm free. And I also received the protection of the Roman army, which is nothing to sneeze at. So, um, so it was a big symbol of the clean slate across the board. So when we move into our new year, we have a clean slate. We have, 
I want to be careful when I say that because it's not a magical thing, right? If we have stuff to do from 2018 like I do, we do bring that with us into the new year. But, but this new year is a new energy. There's a new 2019 energy for us all. And in this year, we all have opportunities to grow. We all have things that we will have to overcome. We all have things that we will have to work a little bit to express more of ourselves. And our white stone word, and I want to say any guidance that we receive from within ourselves that we know it belongs to us, requires us to fulfill it. It requires us to fulfill it. It's one thing to get our word. It's another thing to do what I did that first year that I did the White Stone Ceremony and got my word and stuck it in my sock drawer for the rest of the year. <laughs> Actually, just until October. Ten months. It's a long time. So I did this ceremony kind of reluctantly. <coughs> because I grew up in unity, I kind of had this attitude. <coughs> You've heard a little bit about my attitudes before, but... Um, I have this attitude that it's like, okay, I'll do this for these unity people who need, who need ceremony and ritual. I don't really get it, but as, the more I learned about it, the more I researched it, it's like, okay, I can buy into this a little bit. So when I did the, the first service and I got my word, it was friend. I was so disappointed. We had just moved to Overland Park, as I mentioned, and... Um, and, and I had there a group of people, my meditation group, that I already knew. I kind of knew them. We kind of lived together to close by each other, so I didn't know them, know them. But we kind of had this, this meditation group commonality, so I thought, oh, this is going to be a breeze. I've already got friends. I don't, why did I get this on my, my white stone word? That's just so disappointing and, and not sparkly, not flashy. So I stuck it in my sock drawer and went, okay, yeah, whatever. I'm done with that. I did my part. I'm done. Um, so 10 months later, when Greg asked me, oh, are you going to do the white stone ceremony again in January? I'm like, what? <laughs> oh, that. Yeah, I guess I could do that. And then I got me, it got me to thinking. What was my word? I don't even remember, but I do remember where it is, so I kind of see it if I dig around for that, my favorite pair of socks every now and then. So I pull it out, and it's like, friend, oh, that's right. Well, I don't really have any more friends than I did before, and I'm, I'm not, you know, nobody's like calling me up to go out for coffee or anything, and nobody's calling me to do things or go to movies or, what the heck? It didn't work. My stone is broken. <laughs> but on further reflection, I went, actually, it wasn't even further reflection. It was this little voice in my head that said, well, <clears throat> Lynn, what have you done to call anybody and go out for coffee and go out for movies and go out and, you know, have friends? It's like, oh, yeah, I haven't done anything. <laughs> okay, so got me thinking that I should probably do something. So one of the people in our meditation group was moving, and I volunteered to help her move, and we got to talking and packing and lifting refrigerators and with help. And, um, and we just clicked, we connected. And I asked her, I said, well, why, why didn't I know all this about you before? She's like, I know, where have you been? It's like, we've been, like, we've had, there was a class we took together all year, there was a meditation night we had all together all year, and it's like, I didn't even know her. And we clicked and we connected, and she became, and still is, one of my very best friends in the world. She's awesome. And she actually wrote a song for the White Stone Ceremony that she sang the next year that I did it, in that January. It was so beautiful. So, but I had to take action on it. And the reason my white stone wasn't working for 10 months was because I wasn't doing my part to fulfill what I needed to, to get outside of myself. Because I had all sorts of excuses. 
my daughter was, had just turned three. <coughs> you know, at the beginning of the year, it was, oh, we just moved, we got to unpack. And then you know, nobody called to help unpack. And then, you know, well, I've got my daughter, and, you know, and whatever. But I also had this, like, this thing in my head, this, this number that I was playing that said, well, if people are interested in being with me, they'll, they'll call me. But it doesn't really work. If people don't know me, why would, how would they know to be interested in me? You know? So I have to put myself out. I have to be open. I have to not be so unapproachable so that people aren't, you know, thinking like, oh, she's too busy or she's, you know, she's got her own thing going on. She, you know what I mean? I was really putting off that body, but I had to take that down. I had to take that down so that I could have friends. <laughs> so, as you are receiving your, your white stone word today, or tomorrow, or a month from now, it doesn't matter, because this is a new year, here's, here's the thing about the ceremony, don't hold it too tightly because it's a ceremony. It's a representation of um, putting into a word a focus for you for the year. But I will tell you, you already have a focus for the year, whether you get a word or not. You have possibilities for this year, whether you get a word or not. So we're doing this to symbolize our commitment to our possibilities for this new year, not if I don't get my word, then nothing's going to happen for me this year. That is not true, I promise. The only way that is going to do, do that is if you stick yourself in your sock drawer for the rest of the year. Then nothing's going to happen. So, so this is a symbol of our commitment to supporting ourselves in 2019. So I invite you to Put your stones in your hands. Did everybody get a stone? I forgot to ask at the beginning. Is there anybody who needs a stone? Raise your hand. Does everybody have a pencil? Do not pull out a pen. It will not write on that stone. <coughs> pencil is awesome. You can use your permanent marker when you get home. You can shellac it if you'd like to. I'm just going to put our put your energy on your stone. I mean, it already is because it's been sitting with you. It's it belongs to you. The moment it was handed to you, it is yours. And so we're just open and receptive to whatever that that word symbol is. And when I say word, it can be a letter. I had people who. Um, one woman, one year, years ago, got the letter L, and it became representative of, as, as she noticed at the end of the year, love, light, laughter, all in different situations that showed up for her. It can be a word. It can be a phrase, although notice the size of your stone. <laughs> Not a long phrase. <laughs> And it's not something to be forced either. It's something to just let, let it flow through you. Let it flow to you and through you. And really it's one of, you know, the way we're receptive sometimes in, in uh, a circumstance like this or if we're asking for guidance or an answer is to let go of our ideas of what it's supposed to be and let go of that logical, rational mind that wants to figure it out and just let it go and take the first thing that comes up. That inner sanctuary in your heart is always there. It walks around with you. It waits for you. It's there to serve you. This is a beautiful new year already. 
It's a beautiful new year filled with opportunities to support our awakening. And everything is here to support our awakening. So thank you, God. Thank you for that symbol for the year that we can consciously support with our awareness, with our action. And just listen. And when you feel that you received your white stone word, go ahead and write it down. And if you don't get anything today, just let that receptivity be there. It may make itself known six months from now. If you can allow yourself to go with the first thing that comes up, do that. <coughs> it doesn't have to be flashy, it's meant to be grounded and centered. this word, we bless this time, we bless this commitment to our spiritual growth. And I invite you right now to say a little commitment to yourself, to your higher self, to, to your true self that is emerging through you, that you will assist it. You will cooperate, you will follow your guidance and stretch out and let go. You will embrace the joy of missing out on everything that is not supportive of your spiritual growth. take these stones with us as a sealing of that commitment to ourselves. And we place it where we can see it, where we can be reminded of it, where we can commit to it every day this year. Committing to our spiritual growth. Whatever that's going to look like in 2019, we are all in Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. And we move more deeply into that sanctuary within our hearts, that inner quiet place that may not feel so quiet sometimes, but even just turning our attention within helps to soothe those busy thoughts, on the body and make us receptive to that guidance that is always coming in and through through us as divine energy, divine ideas, peace, whatever it is that we need, it's there.
forward into this new year, we have a clean slate. We have new possibilities, new opportunities. And the more in alignment with that inner voice we are, the more we grow. minutes right now, a few moments of receptive listening. Letting the thoughts be thoughts and the sounds be sounds around us. Bringing our focus back to that openness within. That quiet place. in the silence. We are open and receptive to all things good, all things for our growth in 2019. We are open to the messages, we are open to the things that are there for us to embrace and the things that are there for us to let go. Thank you God for that spirit within moving through us, guiding us every step of the way as we listen. to those inner promptings. Thank you, God, for courage and strength, for joy, woven into each experience. Thank you, God, for spiritual growth in 2018 and always. We say a special prayer for this year, sending forth our intention to grow, to be more awake, thank you God, thank you for the backing of the universe, backing of that divine energy of love and wisdom and joy. Thank you, thank you, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. Now we transition to that time in our service when we bless our offerings as a symbol of our commitment and our knowing of that, that movement of energy in the universe, that giving and receiving. So it's not just about giving our finances, it's giving our love, it's giving our, our presence, our commitment to our spiritual growth by being here today. So I invite you to take your offering in your hands and bless it with your love, your energy and vibration and light. And we take as our offering blessing, with joy I give and with joy I receive together. With joy I give, and with joy I receive. And silently. And allow once again, together. With joy I give, and with joy I receive. And so it is. Amen.